Hello again, Look, Rick and Paul here. And tonight it's a little bit of a different video. Um, I've been messing around a lot in the workshop recently and uh, I've made a new fidget toy. I also wanted to submit this as my video for Random Gym's giveaway. Um, and it's slightly unusual, that too. Um, unlike most giveaways, Random Jim has no rules for his giveaway. Just dedicate a video to <laughs> a random video to his giveaway. And uh, that, that's good enough. So I thought, OK, well, let's take a good long look at Random Jim's channel. And if you've not seen it, he makes lots of stuff out of leather and he makes picks and it's amazing work. Um, and I thought, what better than to have a maker video for Random Jim's giveaway? So that's what this is, and I'm going to show off my new toy. So, um, excellent work on your channel and on your stuff that you make, Jim. Um, I hope you like this, and I hope it qualifies. So let's get into it. What these are, these are Ingersoll 10-lever um, uh, rim locks, and they are notoriously difficult to pick. Um, I just recently finally cracked them after a lot of work. Um, I thought it could have been easier. It would have been nice to have sort of really understood the mechanism and how it worked. And actually, one of the reasons I got into this lock is because I really liked the mechanism. But there is a problem, and I'll show you. Um, this is an unmodified Ingersoll 10 lever. And it's got this... Uh, taking these apart is murder. If you want to get the core out, you've got to take this uh, cotter pin out here. And then you've got to undo the world's largest circlip. And that really is powerful. It's an absolute pain to get off. And I thought, wouldn't it be good if I had an Ingersoll that I could just whip the core in and out of as I pleased and had a cutaway um, and had something to fidget with on my desk? I like a fidget toy and I like a lock based fidget toy as well. So what I've come up with are these. Uh, first things first, this is a regular Ingersoll. All I've done with this one is machined away part of the centre section, which allows, uh, when you undo the cotter pin at the back, allows the core to pull out. To zoom out a second, we can see it a little bit better. So, also what I've done is I've replaced the cotter pin with a nice... Uh, stainless steel circlip which I've made and all we have to do is pull this up and put, pull it out that cap just pulls off so we can, what we can do is we can pull the core out there we go and the core just slots out the front so now we've got an empty housing and I can take this apart without any need for any tools put that back over there I also made this one, corresponding machine cutout on the front face of the lock. But this one, I've got a couple of cut um, cutaways, so you can see the mechanism. So let's put this back in the actual locked position. This cutaway shows you the operation of the key as it goes in and out of the levers, and this one shows you the spine of the levers themselves. We can pull this out. Good to see more moving. And here, I can show you just on above those uh, teeth. That's the channel that the uh, sidebar slots into. So if I just push this key home, you should see all those levers that should below those teeth sort of push out of the way, and they'll line up. And now the lock will turn. Only I haven't got the key in properly. Oh, there you go. <laughs> and now the lock will turn. Now, unfortunately, because of the position of the sidebar, if you're mounting this in the vise and picking it, you still can't see those levers clearly. Unless you had it sort of rotated like this, which means you're picking at a strange angle. It would work brilliantly if you were using one of those new leashes. Um, but still, it's very interesting, and you can sit here and fiddle away for your heart's content. What I've also done is 
put a corresponding circlip on there so we can just pull this apart like so I'll have to pull the pull key out this way there you go and the cord pops out It really is a fantastic looking mechanism. What you can also do, because I like to fiddle and tinker around with things, you can take the other core, because they're fully interchangeable. That will slot in there like so. You can mess around with it. Fantastic. And it makes a really nice display on the desk as well. So I've got two of these, one cut away, one not, but you can swap the cores about and fiddle, fiddle around. So anyway, that is my new Ingersoll-based fidget toy. No tool, disassembly, and core swap. And Random Jim, I hope that qualifies. Uh, that's it for tonight. Hope you like it. A little bit different. Cheers.